Uh, so I'd like to introduce Katie Frasor. She uh, is a, a local area member, although I imagine most of us are from the Two Rivers area here, although anybody can attend our relay. She lives uh, here in Fairhaven. Um, we've actually known each other for quite a while. We've done a number of things together, serving different capacities uh, in Fairhaven and, and in other ways. And uh, she is a breast cancer survivor. So please put your hands together for Katie Frasor. So I just want to share that when Mark was texting me and said, do you want to do this? And then he called me and I said, oh, I could talk about this. I could talk about this. I could talk about this. He said, um, five minutes, Katie. <laughs> so, and go. And go. <laughs> so um, before I start, I just want to say that the reason I'm here in the, this community is because I came to work for at and as did my husband. And seeing how generous the at and teams have been to this cause kind of is very cool, full circle. And um, it's a very special company. It's very cool to have those teams here. Um, the other thing is that 15 years ago, the first time that I helped out here, when I was just out of everything that had happened, um, myself and a little silver teenager named Mike Berry, that some of you might know, he, he had bone cancer and he uh, got through that and I got through my thing and we walked around the first lap with our flags. And last night, I happened to go to a class that Mike Berry was teaching. He's now a paramedic at, in uh, Jersey City. He also is a volunteer with the first aid squad over there. I tried to drag him over here, and he was like, no, I don't want to have anything to do with it, which is kind of the theme of my remarks. <laughs> so, um, so it's really cool to see young ladies here, because I think I had a pretty good opening statement, and that is um, mascara. What? <laughs> What on earth does learning how to put on mascara have to do with cancer or the American Cancer Society? So I'll tell you, and I'm sharing this with you because the quote fighting cancer thing sometimes has less to do with medicine and doctors and ribbons and more to do with very simple acts of generosity, kindness, and acts that are literally, acts that are literally the weapons that we use in our fight. And all of you are part of that fight. And when Mark asked for survivors to come forward, I would venture that every single one of you could step forward because I bet every single one of you knows a grandpa or a grandma or an uncle or a friend or a neighbor's parent that dealt with cancer and I bet some of you have had to deal with some loss. So you could have every single one of you up here as part of this survivor team. So back to mascara. In 2003, uh, on a fall October day when my two boys were in kindergarten and first grade, I discovered a lump in my right breast. And this led to the chain of events that many are very familiar with. The panic, the research, the internet searches, the decisions, the surgery, again, the panic, the biopsies, and living day to day. Back to mascara. So <laughs> there I was at Sloan Kettering, post mastectomy, finally feeling kind of decent when a nice volunteer wandered into the room. She had an American Cancer Society volunteer button on, and she said to me, we're going to go have a lesson on, on how to put up makeup. Why don't you come join us? Like makeup? Stop by to learn how to put on makeup. Why the mm -hmm, do I care about that now? <laughs> but off I went, clutching my IV pole, maneuvering it down the hallway with my chest bound up, my arm stiff, all kinds of drugs in me to make me feel better. And I entered the room, I'm the Sloan Kettering fifth floor, and I walked into something that I'll never forget and it took my breath away. There were 15 women sitting there they were all bound up, their chests were bound up, and they all had their little IV poles. And the looks on their faces were the same. Fear, pain, weary, a little relief. And then my eye was drawn to one woman who looked absolutely terrified. Then the American Cancer Society volunteers started to talk, and she had charts and samples and showed us how to apply makeup and how to cover up our dark circles under our eyes how to deal with complexion that gets a really nasty color when you're dealing with chemo. Um, and she finished it all excited and said, um, mascara, exclamation point. Make sure you know how to apply mascara. Put it on your bottom lashes first so that when you go up, you don't smudge. And then I looked around the room and there we all were laughing, talking, sharing our stories. It could have been a coffee chat at Busker Du's. And that woman that I saw that looked terrified, she kind of had a twinkle in her eye. She even looked less pale. 
And 16 years later, I was struck that out of all my memories from all those days at Sloan, I will never forget that simple kindness of an American Cancer Society woman that just volunteered a little bit of time to show some women how to put on some makeup. And 16 years later, yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> if you stand close to me, you can tell. So, um, and I'm sharing this story because this morning I was trying to figure out what am I going to talk about, and I was looking for a T-shirt, and I was digging through my drawer, and I found this one. And I looked at it and I thought, wow, this is perfect. See all the we's? What does it say? We, uh, we are the courageous, we are the hopeful, et cetera, et cetera. And it occurred to me that there is no I in cancer. The we is not the survivors. The we is everybody that's here, people that do what you're doing. And the we is that the time that you spend with someone who is sick, the we is the hope that a doctor gives. And I just have to give a shout out. There's a young man from RFH whose father is an oncologist in the area. And I know that he gives countless, countless hours of hope and service to his patients. So it's really cool to see him here. The we is the book that your neighbor drops by. The we is all those way too many bad for you pasta casserole dishes that people leave on your front porch so you don't have to cook. The we is my son's first grade teacher. Mrs. Eisenberg, at sickle schools, now you always try to keep things quiet when you have the little ones, because we think that you kids aren't smart enough to handle this, and I've since learned that you are. And Mrs. Eisenberg, after school, pulled me aside and said to me, with great concern and kindness, Katie, are you okay? She goes, look what Paul drew today. And it was one of those, you know, the paper with the lines at the bottom and a drawing at the top, and it said, I think my mommy has a boo-boo on her breast. And that she took the time to tell me that allowed me then to talk to my, my son about it. The we is our family members who are there lockstep with us and our friends, not perfectly at all times. There's no way to say the perfect thing or be the perfect person when someone's dealing with anything tough. So looking around at all of you, you guys are part of this we. Whether you're raising $5 or $1,000 or whatever you do, it's just part of that whole connectivity. And um, we know that American Cancer Society is raising money, so smart people are going to solve it and get a cure and all that. But you're part of that. You're part of that little piece of the equation. And who knows, some of you might go on to college and become scientists and biologists or doctors or caregivers or volunteers or teachers, and you're all part of the we. So in 2013, exactly 10 years to the minute when I found out that my right breast had cancer, maybe out of like left, left breast jealousy, it wanted some of the attention, I found out that I had cancer again. With a mammo, everybody get your mammos, men get your checkups, everybody do what you need to do. So I found out I had cancer, and I think my husband, Tony, who's here, will attest, I wasn't really as scared because I remembered the we from the previous time. And it got me through the next phase. So um, plenty of we to go around. So to those of you who are here, some of you are in that frightened deer in headlights phase, you know, that you just got diagnosed or you know someone that was diagnosed. Some of you are in that survivor, I am woman, hear me roar, I am man, hear me roar. Um, some of you have lost loved ones. Some of you, like me perhaps, almost decades later, 16 years later, it's behind me but it's always with me. That's the only way I can describe it. And it's important to know that you all contribute, you're all part of the we, and, and as a footnote, 16 years later, I feel so grateful that this weekend, that little first grader, Paul Frisora from 2003, who drew that little picture, is graduating from college on Sunday. And we're all going up to uh, go to that graduation. And for that, I'm so grateful. And yes, I'm still trying to figure out how to apply mascara. And thank you to all of you. Thank you to the American Cancer Society.